Hey guys, Wonder Beast here, and I want to talk to you about a product that I've had for almost two years now, which is a solar blanket by Lensun. And yes, this is a pretty big boy. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, before we dive into the 300 watt Lensun solar panel blanket, let's talk about why would you want a solar blanket in the first place. Now, the most obvious is I don't want to mount a rigid or flexible permanently mounted solar panel to my rig, my truck, my bus, my expedition rig, whatever it is. For whatever reason, if it's stealth, you name it. You don't want to mount one, great, I got it. So I currently have 360, I have two Bouge RV 175 or 180 panels on top of the bus and usually in the summertime when the sun is high in the sky, I can easily push 15 amps into my batteries passively while I'm parked, while I'm driving, while it's sitting in my driveway if it's not under a tree, I'm getting good sun and good solar and it usually keeps things topped off. As we've talked about, I use a lot of high amperage things. I like to use air fryers and make pizzas and bagels and all sorts of stuff with the air fryer. I use an induction cooktop. That takes a lot of juice. Now it's a lot of juice over a short amount of time and I usually don't base camp for multiple days at a time, you know, up to a week in one spot without moving. It's generally a couple days and then we're on the road making miles and I can charge that way. My biggest component in the summer is going to be how hot do I want to be sitting in that one location. Well, certainly I'm here over near the river enjoying myself with my dog and it's say 100 degrees out in the summer. Do I want to have the bus out in the middle of the clearing gathering solar or do I want to have it in the shade? So, you know, it's happened multiple times. I'll put in some clips as I talk, but I will set out that, that solar blanket to gather 300 watts up to around 14 amps that I can move and position as the day goes on and still keep my bus relatively cool. Now let's fast forward to winter. What happens in winter? Well, the sun is super low in the sky, barely gets up high enough to get onto the solar panels. That is if the solar panels aren't covered in frost or snow or ice. In fact, I said that in that review, I wish Bouge RV or somebody would come up with heated solar panels so that you don't have to climb up on your bus or your roof or wherever and get the snow and the ice off so you can make solar. So if you're staying in one spot, the other thing is these are non-positionable solar panels that I mounted. They are flat mounted onto the roof and a lot of people will indicatively make some sort of a ramp so that they can incline their solar panels so that you're taking advantage of that really low sun in the winter. Solar panel is perfect for that. So not only do I want, not want to get up on my roof and deal with the snow and the ice, most of the time you've got multiple days so you're either constantly clearing off the snow or you're traveling and snowing and it's not snowing, but you set up camp, you have a solar panel that has been stored inside of your RV or your bus, your van, your expedition vehicle that is nice and warm and it is clean and you set out your panel and you start pulling 14 amps off a of directional low sun in the winter. It's phenomenal. Hey guys, I know it might not look it because I'm still in short sleeves here, but it is 10 degrees out here today and we got a big storm. Uh, in fact, almost a foot of uh, snow that is now melted, turned to ice. But if you can see up there, I'm not making any solar. Uh, the winter sun is super low in the sky this time of year and not to mention not having the ability to get up on a nine foot bus and clear that. I don't have a ladder system. That solar panel is not going to be making anything until I can either clear it or it's going to melt off. So that's where having a panel that is deployable and folds back in and you can keep it clean when the weather turns, put it back out when the weather clears. I would be making, you know, 300 watts, 15 amps uh, or close to it um, right now with a little bit of sunshine being able to take advantage of where the sun is in the winter instead of being covered in snow. There's a Max Air fan under there somewhere. Now Lensun's kit does come with its own uh, multi-point tracker solar controller. And what that is doing is taking the higher voltage of what the panels are pulling in and reducing it down to 14 or 12 volts. And you can set up the different profiles. And I'll try to put in some pictures as we talk. It's super easy. Their system is all set up with large 50 amp Anderson connections. And so I have an Anderson connection outside the bus that goes in, it goes right to the MPPT controller. 
and then that goes right to my battery. So not only does it give me a peace of mind that if anything happened with my Renogy MPPT solar controller for my Bouge RV panels, I now have a backup. I now have redundancy. So not only do I get out there in the middle of winter, set up the panels to exactly take advantage of that low winter sun, get as much juice as possible, I'm doing it out of a secondary controller that gives me redundancies. I love the idea of that. The other thing is, again, bus batteries, my truck batteries themselves, not the house batteries, say I leave something on and they go dead and nothing else is working, the charger, house battery's dead, everything is dead. I can pull out the solar blanket, I can put the charge controller onto a 12 volt lithium profile, a non-lithium profile, and I can charge my uh, AGM batteries that are for the truck and in a couple of hours have them topped off. I like that redundancy. Whether it's preparedness, whether it's emergencies, whether it's just adventuring with the better components of a solar blanket, they are, I think, an absolute necessity to have in your kit. Now the kit you see, I'm not sure of the poundage, but it's pretty hefty. Um, you can see it comes in a nice case. I honestly, I don't really have an issue with the case. Um, to me, it didn't feel super robust when I first got it. Uh, however, really over two years now of in and out and bouncing around the truck, um, it has not a scratch on it, so it's doing well. So the panel itself is very, again, I'll put in some close-up shots. It's a very sort of tough Cordura-ish material. Good Velcro on here. Standard Anderson connection, like I said. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And then unfolding is this massive, massive panel. So now how do you control this very large unwieldy panel? Now certainly if you guys are used to the Blue Yetis, you're used to other solar powered units, most of the time those will come with a 100 amp or 100 watt panel that has little legs on it and they're very short and low to the ground and you unfold it, you put the legs out, not a big deal. It's kind of a one row solar panel blanket, if you will. Now there are some harder side stuff, I think Goal Zero has a few, but they take up a little bit more room. Solar blankets are nice because they fold very compactly. The problem is when you get this panel that is three units by a wide for whatever panels it is, um, it's very unwieldy. So I, you'll see in the shots that I put in here, I have tried to just tie it over the bus, I've tied it on the grill, I've tied it over the windscreen. Um, I've done a lot of different quick and dirty setups, but in the end, truly what I needed is something that would prop it up. So I made right now, it's kind of in testing, it's just a homemade out of uh, conduit, piping, you know, electrical conduit you can buy at Home Depot for a couple dollars, smash down the ends, put the screws in there, and I'll show you what that looks like set up. Now certainly laying out the blanket here out in the sun where it's high noon is great, but as the morning and night goes, we're going to need to follow the sun through the horizon. So pretty easy. I've got some bolts and some smashed conduit over here, and we're going to get that set up. So you can see it makes an X pattern, and then I've got two legs on each side. I merely have a bolt on there, a couple wing nuts will keep that on there, and then a longer kind of all thread through the bottom, it just kind of pops in, holds the legs sturdy. So this gives you an idea, with the conduit stand, I can sort of chase the sun through the low winter sky all the way around here. Today's a beautiful bluebird day, so I won't be needing to do too much of that. Now the only other thing I really recommend you getting is basically an extension cord. Um, this was ordered off of Amazon. I'll see if I can find a link and put it down below. I'm sure you could find them. They use the Anderson plugs and they're just a 10 gauge extension cord. I think this one is 50 feet. That has really enabled me to get this thing where I want it. The problem with locating a solar blanket, whether you have it on a stand or whatever, even tied to the front bumper, is I was almost at my maximum limit of what the wiring that came with this is. So it's solar controller, wherever your batteries are tied in, that's why eventually I put the outside connection on there so I can tie it to the outside without having to go in a window. That got me a few more feet, but in the end what I wanted was I wanted to get it away from the bus. I wanted to park in the shade and have that thing out there in the field. So I needed that extra extension. And so I almost consider that a necessity and I think that Lensun should probably add that into there it may add their cost but that way all the connections are right you don't have to add something else to buy 
I did, it's not a big deal. But I think to utilize a solar blanket to its fullest uh, capabilities, I think you need to have an extension. And so the short cord that came on it, I just think is inadequate. That's really my only gripe, other than dealing with the flimsiness of such a large panel and not having a way to lock it solid without having to make a homemade stand like I did. Other than that, Lens Sun has been performing flawlessly now for two years. Part of the reason I took so long doing this review is because I was a little bit, you know, is this thing gonna last? I've talked to friends who have the $1,400 Red Arc 300 and a lot of times what they'll do is put it on their awning which is a great idea I currently don't have an awning uh, for the bus right now and honestly you go look at their input you check their red vision they're pulling in 14 amps 13 amps and here I am with this lens sun absolutely knocking out of the park with 14 15 amps sometimes in full sun hey guys welcome back to the homestead you're probably gonna hear some lawn speed mode some guys grinding down the road uh, it's a weekend, people are getting stuff done, and as you can probably tell, I've got the drawers pulled out to get into the electrical cabinet for another review we've got coming down the road, but I thought it was a perfect opportunity to show you the heart of the system, which is the solar controller, the MPPT controller that comes with this 300 watt panel. Certainly, just having the panel as good as it is is nothing without some way of converting that 22 volts into usable power. Now, I have it as lithium profile so it can charge the house batteries, and as I mentioned, the fact that I love that I can just turn it back to AGM, I can hook it up to the truck batteries. If I wake up and everything is dead, house batteries are out of batteries, the truck won't start, I can turn this in, take the 50 little foot uh, extension cord that I talked about, and I can run it out and use the same clips that I've got in here right now and run those clips into the truck battery. And I'm well on my way. So it cut, the whole kit kind of comes together. Now, and also in preparation for this review, I looked it up online, and I will say that this kit, the 300 watt panel kit with the solar controller and all the wires, is now down to like $500. I think I bought it for seven something. It was close to $800. So if you compare that to the Red Arc that I put up at $2,000 right now, this is coming in at $500. That is 25%, and it's doing all the business. And again, this is going on to be a two-year review now, and it's rock solid. I don't ever recommend anyone going for that full red arc system I don't see why now saying that as technology advances this 20 amp solar controller in here is plenty for this 300 watt panel but I will say if you're ready to spend that $800 that I did on this they now have a 400 watt I haven't seen it in person I'm just looking at their reviews online and uh, stuff on their website if you go to lensun.com I'm sure I'll put a, a panel down below a link down below but they're 400 watts they're set up in a little bit smaller panels, so I think the whole system might be a little bit bulkier, but it might take up a little bit less of a footprint than this one does. Now, I foresee having just as hard of a problem laying this out somewhere to, to take advantage of that winter sun. So I still, we might bring it into a separate review, but having some way like I've got with the conduit, I might try to re replicate it with PVC just to get the weight down, but have some way of propping this up is going to be key, especially with more panels that are even smaller with that 400 watt. But again, that one comes with a 30 amp controller. So this 20 amp we'll take a look at here has been rock solid. All right, guys, this is my electrical panel. Batteries down here, coming with the fuses, working your way up through the whole system. We've got the Renogy here, and as I said, having a great backup right next to it. Solar controller, 20 amp, and it's got the 50 amp Anderson connection. So right now I'm just kind of dummy coordinate together. Um, I'm redoing some of the wiring, so that's why you're seeing it the way it is, but it's coming out. Obviously, the panel's coming in here as a 50 amp service through that little connector, and then the 14 volts is coming out, and right now it's just being clipped, alligator clipped, onto my system so I can run some numbers, but uh, I'm in the process of doing another review of an actual like charger system, and so we're kind of redoing some wiring because of that. Also running the 50 amp Anderson connection. So I wait forward to that video down the road, but uh, super easy to put in. It's plug and play. You've got Anderson connections that plug right in. You mount this somewhere or don't and just plug it right into your batteries, plug it into your truck, your house batteries, and make sure your profile set. The app is super intuitive. The app works great, connects every time. I have zero issues with the app. All right, guys, I'll put in a quick shot. Earlier, it was kind of a little bit cloudy. We're still getting kind of broken up clouds and I was getting two to three amps. Now, 
as the sun's coming out, it's still kind of in between a cloud. I'll put in a shot here, but as you can tell by me, I'm, I'm a little more covered in sun. We're getting 11 amps. So on a fully sunny day, um, I remember getting 14, 15 amps. That's kind of the maximum, which is amazing, really. So don't hesitate to go check them out. I'll put all the links that I can possibly find for you guys to go kind of figure it out. The other thing I really want to try next is Lensun is one of those companies that makes those panels that fits onto your hood that has a baby little solar controller and you hook it up to your truck battery so that no matter what, when you want to go adventure, when the emergency strikes, you jump in your truck and you go to head out, you're topped off all of the time. And I think that is probably going to be the next purchase I make from Lensun. Let me know if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, guys. This has been Wander and Beast with Lend Sun Solar Blanket, 300 watt. Thanks for watching. We'll see you down the road. Thanks for all the love and support. You guys are amazing. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the adventure on social media, and we'll see you on the road.